morning, everybody. On the outset, I uh, want to thank Vaira Global for this opportunity, respected chairpersons, conveners, and delegates. My take today is going to be to speak to you on meniscus root tears, identification, repair techniques, and results. We all know that the posterior horn root tears are more common than the anterior. They are many a times missed uh, preoperatively, and we just realize that there is a root tear during an arthroscopy. And if these are untreated, then we all know it can lead to osteoarthritis. The posterior horn uh, medial uh, meniscus is located 9.6 millimeters posterior and 0.7 millimeters lateral to the medial tibial eminence, which is just adjacent to the PCL ligament. This is a good landmark for doing the repair. And the posterior uh, root of the lateral meniscus has a broader attachment, located 4.2 millimeters medial and 1.5 millimeters posterior to the lateral tibial eminence. And this is again uh, by Laprade. Whenever we are thinking of uh, root tears, always have a high level of suspicions. Many a times they are missed preoperatively, but if a patient has uh, posterior pain on deep flexion, then you should think of it. Pivot is usually more positive. Patient just has an ACL tear, but if he has an explosive pivot, then you should think of a, a root tear. MRI evaluation is something which will clinch the diagnosis, and on the MRI, this is how a normal root is seen, and you have to look for the extrusion. Sometimes it is seen more than three millimeters along with a vertical defect. Also, what you need to see is the extrusion which you see in this and the cleft sign. This is very pathognomic of uh, a root tear. And another one is the missing meniscus posteriorly or the ghost sign. And this is also seen in the actual sequence. So MRI, you tell your radiologist to specifically look for it if you're having a high level of suspicion. And these cuts and sequences should be always included by a radiologist. Because once you know that there is a tear, you're better prepared to handle it intraoperatively rather than just diagnosing it by accident. Meniscal root tears, uh, type 1, as described by Laprat, partial type 2, complete radial root tear, type 3, complete root tear with uh, additional meniscus tear, type 4, the oblique tear going into the root, and the type 5, which are very rare, are the root avulsion fractures. I think it is always necessary when you see a root tear to always repair it. If not, we know that it increases the AP and the rotatory instability, so if you have a concomitant ACL, uh, injury then it is very highly uh, susceptible to failure. There is significant loading and, uh, uh, and effect of loading on the biomechanics of the knee leading to osteoarthritis. And this is an article which shows that if there is a meniscal root tear, you know, there is uh, always reduced uh, ability to resist the hoop stresses. The contact pressures in the compartments are nearly equivalent to that of when a total meniscectomy is done. And therefore, you have to be absolutely sure that you repair these tears. Don't leave them alone. If untreated, you can see this was a partial tear, which was actually uh, easily repairable, not uh, repaired, led to a complete uh, tear with extrusion, bone edema subsequently, stress reaction, articular cartilage was damaged, leading to subchondral collapse, insufficiency fractures, and ultimately develops osteoarthritis. So coming to the technique, I think uh, there are two techniques, and the most commonly one which I do is the pull-out sutures. Using a swivel lock there is quite challenging technically. And in the pull-out sutures, we have the one tunnel and the two tunnel technique. I think but it is easier to do a one tunnel technique, and it's quite uh, uh, easy. You have to have the special equipment. You know, our regular ACL jigs, as you can see, they have uh, a difficulty because it's the tip aimer, and you cannot pass it in the limited space. So use a low-profile jig like this where you can go into the posterior space. That is very, very important. You should always have a Scorpio. I like a Scorpio better than the Acupass, uh, which is from the Acufex, because it's just one bite, two bites, you get it done. And then eye storm from your shoulder colleagues, fiber wire, fiber tape, and you should have a cannula. Uh, and I'll tell you why in a minute. So these are the various steps, uh, probing, preparing, retrying the sutures, and tying of the tibia. And I'll take you through these steps in this video. As you can see, the root tear is seen. This is the lateral meniscus. Uh, and if there is an ACL tear, it becomes easy to see. Then you put your low-profile ACL jig. And this is a very, very important step, because where your guide wire exits is where you have to 
be in the exact anatomical location. That's where your repair is going to sit. Pass uh, the passing suture, pull it out to the antelital portal. Then you take your Scorpio. I like the Scorpio. Take two good robust bites and this is again a critical step and when you're coming out with the needle you have to make sure there is no cartilage otherwise your needle will not come out and it at times can break also so keep it free if required on the medial side you can do a release of the mcl also then take two robust sutures about three to four millimeters away from each other and then you retrieve all of them through the anterolateral portal these are the two sutures through the meniscus and this is the passing suture this is very important and then you pull out all the two sutures through the passing suture on the tibia, pull it over a free endo button and then I think it is important to check the tension before tying it. Don't over constrain it, then you tie it and uh, you finish your repair, you just check it. It should not be over constrained because if it is over constrained then that's also not a good idea. So this is the final picture of the repair which is done and this is uh, the final x-ray. The sequence is very important. Do the tunnels for uh, the ACL, then pass your graft, uh, then, no, sorry, do the tunnels for the ACL, then do the repair, the tibial tunnel, pull out sutures, repair the complete lateral meniscus, then pass your ACL graft, fix it. I think the uh, lateral meniscus or a medial meniscus root repair with an ACL. The post op rehab here is very critical, non wet bearing for four weeks touch weight bearing and full weight bearing by eight weeks four to eight weeks limit the range of motion in the first six weeks i think that is very critical don't let your patients flex beyond uh, 90 degrees and then gradually increase the flexion and up to 12 weeks you can get full rom this is important because in deep flexion the stresses are quite high and your patients may return back to sports after six months complications the scuffing of the articular cartilage because you're working in a very limited space and that is what in the initial part of your practice you can see. Don't pull it because once you made your tunnel, you can over constrain it. I think that is important and your tunnel has to be anatomic. So if you are doing especially a medial root repair, you may have a tight medial joint and then you may want to do pie crusting of the MCL and open up the medial space. Also prepare the root uh, uh, wherever the guide wire is coming out, denude the cartilage so that the meniscus tissue he heals well in the denuded cartilage and use ports in the AL or the AM portals because if you are pulling two or three sutures out, you know, they get entangled in the fat and I've had that complication and it becomes very messy to then tie it. So friends, in summary, for root tears, keep a high level of suspicion. Clinically, it may be difficult to diagnose a root tear, so MRI is uh, pertinent and uh, uh, can pick up your root tears. Once diagnosed, repair is mandatory. Get an anatomic and robust repair. Post-op protocol is stringent. And if there is concomitant arthritis, very severe, then that's a different ball game and you've got to deal with those situations differently than uh, acute root tear. I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Parak. Uh, I now invite uh, Dr. Mihir Patel. Uh, he's going to speak on uh, PCL fossa avulsions, uh, open and arthroscopic repair techniques.